That's our, that's our reward tonight is our salvation. The Bible said that that's the end of our faith. Is our salvation. Thank God when we start out. I know a lot of people says, well, once you get saved, you know, you don't have to do nothing because Jesus has already done it all for you. Yeah, he has. But the thing about this, we need to get in him and we need to do it for ourselves. Amen. Thank God because he was our example. Thank God that we walk in him. Thank God and do what he has to do. He, you know, he, did, he came here. He was God manifested in the flesh. And he came here for the purpose of to overcome sin, to destroy sin. And when he came, he did that very thing. But today people says, now if we just believe in him, we can go ahead and sin. That will be all right. And that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says he that sinneth is of the devil, thank God. And people says, well, you know, I'm not perfect. No, but I'll tell you what, you need to be working on perfect because that's what charity is. The Bible says it's a bond of perfectness. Colossians 3 and 14 says charity is a bond of perfectness. Thank God. I'll tell you what, you know, you, you go down the road, I, I, you have an automobile, and I've done this a lot, Brother Don. You got something wrong with that automobile. When I was, when I was young, I did a lot of stuff like this. I'd have a bad tar on my car. And maybe have the money to get it fixed, but I'd just keep putting it off, keep putting it off. And I'd go on down the road. And then one night when it'd be pouring down the rain, I'd break down out on the road somewhere. Thank God, and I'd think, well, you know what? And then I'd get out and get mad at my car because it didn't, it, because it had a flat tire on it. But you know what? If you don't take care of your stuff, then it's not, you know, it's not God's fault. A lot of people blame the devil for everything. They say, well, the devil caused it. No, a lot of times it's our own negligence, thank God. And we cause it. And you know what? tonight if you're lost. It's not the devil's fault. It's your fault, thank God, because you have an opportunity tonight, thank God, to make things right with your God. Hallelujah to God and start following. And you say, well, I can't be like everybody. You just come, thank God, the best you can. God will help you with the things that you can. He'll help you to turn around. There were things that I had when I first came to the Lord. I first repented of my sins. There were things in my life that wasn't right, Brother Don, but I knew that I needed God in my life and I hid it to the altar and I made right things right with him and thank God I remember getting up after that and I, there were things I had to work on things I had trouble with I still have trouble with things thank God but I'm still working on them thank God thank God putting on charity tonight God wants us to draw nine to him he said he would draw nine to us but you have thank God to make an effort tonight you can't just sit back and say I can't do it my mother she used to say <clears throat> ain't got much of a voice my mother used to say, son, she said, old Kent never did do nothing. Right. Did you ever hear that saying before? Yeah, right. Old Kent never did do nothing. Said, old try come along and did it all. And tonight you can try. And if you make an effort, he said, if you ask, he said he, that he'd help you tonight. Right. But you've got to make that effort, thank God. And I know the devil will show you. I remember the night when I started. The devil would say, oh, what's people going to think about you? And here you tried before and you ain't been able to make it, thank God. All them things go through your mind. But you know what? You've got to forget about all them things, thank God, because God wouldn't be in a call. You wouldn't be in church tonight if God wouldn't deal with your heart. Amen. Amen. The devil would not let you come to church tonight if, the, if God wasn't dealing with your heart. You know what? God is stronger than the devil. God has got more power. And if God is dealing with you tonight, thank God, and conviction is up on you and you're thinking about yourself, then you need to start thinking back, thank God, and not just put it off. People says, I know people, children, that's come to church for years and sat in the church, thank God, and died in the same way they came in, thank God, because they never did make that step. They never did take off. I don't know what the condition is here, Brother Johnny, but I never did hear a confession of faith. I never did see. I knew people that knew the Bible. They could holler at me and they knew all about the Bible, but they never make a, make a step toward repent to God and making things right. But the only one that can change things in your life tonight is yourself. You're the only one that can change. Thank God. I was listening to Sister Darlene and I thought about this so much. Uh, hallelujah to God. I worry of God. Well, what can I say? What can I do? Thank God. How can I help my children? How can I help my family and my friends? I watch people dying all the way around me. Thank God. But you can't really speak to people unless God God gives you the words to speak. And God, it's got to be working on the other end. Amen. You know, even God with dreams. Amen. God's not, God ain't going to send somebody to me, thank God, and tell me God told me to do something and not be working on the other end. God's going to be talking on my end too. That's how I'm going to know that it's Him. Thank God. That's the same way God will work on both ends tonight. That's how you come to church. And God deals with your heart. He talks to you through the day when you're at work on your pillow. And when you go to the house of prayer and you begin to hear the word of the gospel of Jesus Christ it'll convict your heart 
if God is calling you. He's not going to send the thunderbolt of lightning down and strike London like it, but God is just going to speak to your heart and say, will you come tonight? Do you know that you're lost? You're headed for a devil's hell tonight and you don't have no hope, thank God, unless you have Jesus Christ in your life tonight. I'm going to tell you this is the most serious thing tonight. But one of the prophets read this thing. He said, as a matter of fact, a couple places. He said, though Noah, how many knows who Noah was? Let me see your hand. You know who Noah was? How about Job? You know who Job was? Amen. How about, how about Daniel? Everybody's heard. Have you heard of Daniel? But he said, though Noah or Daniel or Job, thank God that we lived in this day, they could save none but their own selves. By their own righteousness. By the works that they're doing themselves. You can't go on somebody else's works. You can't go on the preacher's works. You can't go on mine. You can't go on Brother Don's. Thank God. You've got to go for yourself tonight. When you hear your salvation call, then you've got to change your life and begin to walk for God. And God will help you. He'll turn things around for you. The same God that walked on the shores of Galilee and raised the dead and healed the sick. He's the same one that's in the church tonight. He's still making that call. For oh, that one that don't know him. Hallelujah. And he's glad for your call. And when God spoke to your heart and turned your life around, I'll tell you, God talked to me all of my life when I was a little boy. Convicting heart was always there. But I never did have strength. I remember one time I'm driving down the road and I was crying. I'd say, God, I plead, I really don't want to be living this way. I don't, I don't want to, but you know what? I don't know what to do. I don't know. I don't know how to change. Thank God. I remember when I was in the service, and I'd go. I'd go away. I'd be going. I was across the seas, and, and I, I remember. Thank God. When I'd come home on the weekend, sometimes I'd make a visit to the little church. Thank God. I'm in my uniform, or when I'd come home, and sometime before I'd go back. But you know what? Then I'd go out and drink and crowds around, do all the other stuff that I did. And I can remember times I was leaving the Hanging Rock exit, going out of here, and I was thinking, I'm getting ready to go out of the country. I'm getting ready to leave. Thank God, and I had an opportunity to, uh, at the house of God, I could have made a change in my life, but I, I, I fear, Brother Johnny, because I was going away, I was going away from where I knew there was faith, thank God, I knew there was like faith, I tell you, there's a lot of churches, uh, and there's a lot of professors tonight, but there ain't very many people that's possessors, uh, that you can depend on, that you can count on, thank God, but I remember, thank God, being overseas, I remember they sent me a, they sent me a tape, and uh, I was on the other side of the world. And I think Angie, she was little. Angie and Kevin, and, and I think Vicky, maybe. And they said, and they sent a tape to me. And they said, where we be in a million years from now? Mm -hmm. And I remember I was tough around all the guys. And they didn't know what I had, but I'd go by myself up in the head of the ship, you know. I'd take that tape recording up there and I'd sit and listen to that song and I'd just cry. God was dealing with my heart. I'm glad for God's Spirit. He can reach around the world. God knows every time that you've made promises to Him. Every time that you've been down, down and out. Every time you've been in trouble or you've been in pain and you reach out to Him for help. He was there. Thank God. How many, even if you didn't change. Thank God the God's going you're going to be accountable for that. One of these days, children, when the Lord comes, thank God, and it's going to be too late. I thought about today, I was thinking about these scriptures. I was thinking about how Noah, thank God, how that he was a he was a hundred years, he was five hundred years old, and God gave him a call. How did I can't even fathom five hundred years? How did God how how old he was? But all I know is God gave him a call, and He said I had favor. You know, He said He walked with God. And Noah walked with God. The world was wicked. It was full of corruption, just like it is today. Brother God, I'm walking with God tonight. I mean, he's walking with him tonight. If I keep calls, I'm going to hear him call me. I want to be ready, Brother Buck, when he speaks my name. And I'll tell you what, he knows my name too. And he knows you're tonight. And he's going to call those names one day. If you're not ready, you're going to be lost, children. Amen. I thought about how they, for a hundred years, they built on that ark. 
and how they was under scrutiny and, and people no doubt made fun of them. They bought building a big old boat out in the middle of nowhere, thank God. Amen. All them things. And, you know, he must have really went through a lot of ridicule. But you know what? He set his face toward the mark, thank God, and he did what God told him. No doubt maybe even his children, maybe his wife, thank God. Maybe they questioned what he was doing too. But nevertheless, his faith kept going on forward. He kept telling them, thank God, and it's going to rain 40 days and 40 nights, thank God. I'm going to hold on to what God said. I'll live to God and I want to build an ark for the saving of my soul tonight. And I'll tell you what, there's an ark tonight. It's the church of Jesus Christ. And we need to be in that ark, thank God. And we need to be ready. Because when it comes, there's something worse than a flood that's coming up on the earth tonight. We've got all kinds of catastrophes going on. He told us in Matthew 24, the signs of the times and the things that would be coming up on the earth. You ever get you see them? Have you ever seen a time when we had the floods and the hurricanes and the, and the fires are burning our country up around the world? They got earthquakes and divers places. And God, you know the Bible talked about wars and rumors of wars. There's always been wars. But you know where the war is at? It's in the mind today. That's the kind of mind. When we're talking about Armageddon and they've got a lot of movies and a lot of stories about Armageddon and how that there's going to be a great war and how we're going to be having guns and knives and we're going to fight a battle of good and evil. But I'm going to tell you something, children, that battle's already started. It's in our mind tonight. The devil wants your mind. He wants your heart. He wants the things that you possess. If he can get a hold of everything you've got, he'll take you down to the regions of the dead tonight. There's multitudes and multitudes tonight in the valley of decision. Are you in the valley of decision tonight? Are you making your calling and election sure tonight? Are you down to things that God's give you? Or are you holding on to what God has given you? Amen. All right. Come on, We're living in perilous times, the Bible said. Amen. So there'd be mockers and scoffers in the, in this day, thank God. And all these things is going on. But I, I thought about, amen, you know, one thing. The, the God, he told Noah to build the ark. And he told him to put rooms in it. He told him to pitch the inside of it and pitch the outside. Brother, God had the direction. He was showing Noah how it was going to withstand the storm, you know. And I never really knew anything today. I was reading about this and I, I knew I always just said it was 150 days that they was up on the ark. But actually, they spent almost a year on that ark. Thank God before the animals, everything got out. Amen. It was a long time, about 10 months. Thank God. I was reading today. Thank God. And I thought, my goodness, how they lived and how they was with all their friends and all the ones they knew. They was all gone. And I thought about myself. I remember I was a young boy. How many of them would have the dinners and all their family and all my aunts and uncles and my cousins?